Singapore is amongst the world's richest economies. They are always ranked as one of the most competitive countries, being the biggest spenders per capita, buying up some of the most luxurious real estate to even some of the biggest businesses across the world. Singapore is a country that has a standard of its own. Only a few countries have attained such a status. It would be absurd to say that a country of developing status is catching up to Singapore. Yet, for entertainment purposes, is it possible? Can the topic of today's video, the Philippines, one day catch up to Singapore? Such a dream would undoubtedly enshrine millions of Filipinos. But that is what we're going to discuss today, a dream that may or may not come true. To begin, it's important to first understand where the Philippines is today compared to Singapore. The clearest indicator we can use today is GDP per capita, which measures and compares the economic performance and living standards of countries. According to the 2022 data from the World Bank, the Philippines has a GDP per capita of $3,498 whereas Singapore has over $82,807. By a far stretch, Singapore's living standard far surpasses that of the Philippines. But it should not make people think that reaching Singapore is all but a dream. Back in the 1960s, the Philippines and Singapore GDP per capita was not that far from each other. In 1961, for instance, the Philippine GDP per capita was $278, whereas Singapore at $449. Simply put, had the Philippines grown as fast as Singapore throughout the time until 2022, the Philippines would not be that far from Singapore. Yet, due to distinctive historical movements, things have changed far too much. Secondly, it's also important to understand the political and economic structures of both countries. Singapore's success can be attributed to its stable political environment, robust legal framework, and open market economy. These factors have attracted a large amount of foreign investment and enabled the development of a highly skilled workforce. On the other hand, the Philippines has faced various challenges, including political instability, corruption, and less effective governance, which have hindered its economic growth. Additionally, the Philippines has a larger population and geographical area, which presents different logistical and administrative challenges compared to the smaller and more centralized Singapore. Now, these are just some of the many factors that make Singapore stand out and the Philippines to come behind. So, can the Philippines actually make its miracle generation and even reach Singapore? One of the goals of the Philippines is called Ambition 2040. This plan is a long-term vision for the Filipinos. The plan states that by 2040, Filipinos will have a strongly rooted, comfortable, and secure life. The plan will also put the Philippines to become a high-income country status where no one is poor. This plan is by far the plan that can alleviate the Philippines and possibly reach Singapore. But hang on, what does it mean to become a high-income status? And will it be enough to actually reach Singapore? Well, simply, it's actually not enough. By 2040, it's estimated that the Philippines will have about $11,000 to $14,000 in GDP per capita, which is still far less than Singapore's current per capita. And, of course, by that time, it's likely that Singapore's GDP per capita will be much higher. But it is important to know that Singapore's growth rate will be lower than that of the Philippines. Singapore is constrained by population and resources of many kinds. The Philippines has both of these. It's further projected by some that the Philippines' GDP per capita can reach between $17,000 to $20,000 by 2050, which will likely be enough to helm the country to a position where Filipinos enjoy a luxury life. But it's also important to know that these are mere projections. The Philippines can reach them or even surpass them, or worse, do the exact opposite. One report, published by Capital Economics in 2021, even stated that the Philippines would become the 18th largest economy in the world by 2050. The GDP will reach over 4.8 trillion US dollars, a far flung from the current 450 billion today. The per capita stated by Capital Economies would be over $33,650. Now, if the Philippines can reach that status, it will bring it closer to the status of Singapore. But surprisingly, even after three decades of growth, one can still understand that the Philippines is not even halfway to that of Singapore. 
Moreover, the capital economies reported that this will only happen if the Philippines addresses its infrastructure shortage. Several other studies support this notion that the biggest lack of the Philippines has always been due to infrastructure, hence why the government of the country has been pouring billions to even trillions of dollars over the course of the next few decades to build up the country's roads, highways, trains, subways, airports, and seaports. It's also important to understand that if the Philippines wants to reach the status of Singapore, it must improve its political landscape. To do this, they must focus on strengthening its democratic institutions and processes. This includes ensuring free, fair, and transparent elections, promoting the rule of law, and safeguarding the independence of the judiciary. However, there is still a huge amount of vote buying in the country, a huge amount of rich people paying to bypass laws, and transparency has even been a debatable topic today concerning the Philippine government's use of confidential funds. Additionally, we must also not forget about the Philippines' focus on diversification. The country is still reliant on a few sectors. The government needs to focus on improving the financial industry, manufacturing industry, and technology. But this is what makes the Philippines more optimistic than Singapore. Not only does the country have room to grow, but it also boasts better potential prospects than the island nation. The Philippines has a huge amount of land capable of housing hundreds of millions of people. And like Singapore, the Philippines is also strategically positioned in Southeast Asia. It can become a key player in regional trade and commerce. The country also has natural resources that Singapore does not have. It boasts some of the world's biggest potential for oil reserves in the West Philippine Sea, and if tapped, can boost the Philippine economy. So, with understanding these factors, can we still say that the Philippines can catch up to Singapore one day? It doesn't have to be in 2050, nor even in the next century, but can the Philippines possibly catch up to Singapore eventually as time goes on? Well, the answer is simply no, not at all. And here's why. There are different key differences in each other's economies. The geographical size, population dynamics, natural resources, and historical trajectories of the Philippines and Singapore are vastly different. Singapore's small size and population have allowed for more centralized and efficient governance, enabling rapid economic growth and development. Its strategic location as a global financial hub and port city has been expertly leveraged to build a strong, diverse economy. To put it simply, the reason why Singapore has come first and will always come first is because governance is not difficult. It doesn't have to manage thousands of thousands of islands, just like the Philippines. Further, Singapore's port city will probably be unmatched by any other. Singapore has been ranked consistently as the top maritime capital in the world. This is both because of the economy and infrastructure of Singapore that allows it, but also because the majority of ships that pass between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean go through the Singapore Strait. There is little need to pass by the Philippines if Singapore is already a viable option. And finally, Singapore is a financial center. The Philippines, although it has the capabilities to reach such a status, will find it difficult due to specialization of economies. It makes sense for Singapore to become a financial center and port city because the prospects are there for them. The Philippines, on the other hand, should focus on other factors which leverage its natural resources and labor force, such as manufacturing. And lastly, the most important factor of all is climate change. The Philippines is still amongst the world's most dangerous places to live in according to climate change. As the world becomes hotter, the Philippines, according to experts, will fare the worst of all. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.